And time now for an in-depth look at markets around the world. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Daniel Yu, Global Strategist at UN Securities. Hi, Daniel. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, good afternoon. Now, oil extended its climb out of a month-long trading range with further signs of an accelerating rebound taking shape in the United States. Gold also rose the highest since late February, putting the metal on course for a second straight weekly gain. Let's talk about these two commodities and, and your forecast for the near term. Right, as you said, the oil futures were trading at the highest level in a month. Uh, with the WTI crude climbing above $63 a barrel and Brent uh, topping over $67 a barrel. Uh, as the International Energy Agency and uh, Organizational Petro uh, Petroleum Export countries raise its expectation for 2021 oil demand forecast. Uh, clearly, the kind of recovery that is happening on a global scale is expected to have a bigger demand for oil. Uh, and that seems to be the key booster for the oil price moving up higher. Uh, also, gold prices continue to show some uh, rise, uh, and it is trading at uh, $1,760 per ounce on Friday, uh, which is near seven-week high. Uh, clearly, this is because of the weaker dollars that we've seen in the past uh, and the treasury yield that we have so falling down to quite a bit of a low level that we haven't seen in the past month or so at below 1.6 percent right now is trading at around 1.55 um, the benefit of uh, holding this safe haven uh, seems to be continue to uh, rise because um, there's continuation of concern about the COVID vaccine uh, and the cases of new additional um, patients are definitely rising on a global scale. Um, so therefore, people still continue to have some interest towards the uh, safe haven assets, uh, which is the gold, uh, despite there is continuation of retail sales numbers and the kind of recovery that we're seeing. And we are expecting oil price to stabilize in the future uh, and gold prices also to stabilize in the future as the direction of the currency will remain where it is at the current point in time. Right. So we expect uh, those two commodities to stabilize in the near term future. Meanwhile, Wall Street notched more milestones uh, overnight as a market wide rally pushed the S&P 500 to an all time high and the Dow Jones Industrial crossed above the 34,000 mark for the very first time. Are we seeing optimism and expectations of a strong economic recovery in investor sentiment? Yes. Now, the Dow Jones added 0.9% uh, yesterday. S&P also gained 1.1%. And NASDAQ uh, was up 1.3%. And also, even the small caps, 2000, the Russell 2000, gained about 0.3% after being quite weak in the past several weeks. Uh, clearly, there's optimism in regards to the economic growth rate. Uh, we saw the numbers of the domestic consumption, uh, the, the retail sales numbers jumping a record high pace. Uh, this is clearly indication that the U.S. economy is recovering. And because of the better economic growth than expected, um, the overall uh, the earnings growth for the U.S. companies are expected to show bigger jump. Uh, and on top of that, we saw quite stable uh, interest rate environment of one point uh, below 1.6 percent of the 10-year government bond rate for U.S. So uh, ample liquidity, stable interest rate, and economic recovery at a reasonable pace, all that resulting into uh, further record high level of the index indexes for the U.S. Uh, we think that the interest rate environment should remain to be where it is. Uh, we do expect a gradual rise rather than an aggressive rise of interest rate, and therefore the earnings growth rate will be much bigger implication and impact than the interest rate environment, and uh, U.S. markets should lead, particularly for NASDAQ, to show earnings growth rate that is topping global economy. 
Right, so a bullish market ahead in the U.S., taking a cue from an overnight rally on Wall Street. South Korean shares opened higher on this Friday and, and even crossed the 3,200 mark in the first 15 minutes of trading. But then it closed a little change from yesterday at just a touch below 3,200. What are you reading into this uh, South Korean market? Right. Uh, South Korean market, since the beginning of the year, had been continued to be the leading market versus any other uh, countries in the world. Uh, we saw uh, from the bottom of the COVID-19 cases of last March to the peak of 127 percent rise year on year uh, at, uh, from, from the bottom to the top. And then saw some correction about 10 percent, but once again, it's rising again. Uh, the main reason for such strong numbers that we are seeing uh, in the last about a year is because Korea is expected to show stronger growth rate in terms of the earnings. Uh, last year, it grew by two digits. This year, again, is expected to grow by about 30 percent plus of earnings. And then next year, COSP is expected to show another 20 percent of earnings growth rate. Uh, all these strong earnings growth rate is coming from uh, Korea's skewedness towards the export-related sectors, particularly semiconductor business, the electric cars and automobiles, uh, and uh, other chemicals-related uh, uh, materials, uh, and also some of these uh, export related to the shipping and other uh, economic growth areas are showing recoveries. So clearly, we are seeing one of the better years for the economic growth rate and earnings growth rate of Korea. And this will result uh, into probably further rise in the future. Uh, we are expecting the cost to reach uh, well above 3,500 territories over the next uh, year or so. 3,500. Daniel Yu of Yuanta Securities, many thanks for your insights and expertise. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.